Today I'm going to be using geometry to prove that the square root of 2 is irrational. So I've tried my best here to draw an isosceles right angle triangle, and that's going to be the key to us proving that the square root of 2 is irrational. We're going to start the same way that you do with the standard proof. We're going to assume that root 2 is a over b, where a and b are positive integers. And we're going to also make the additional assumption that the greatest common divisor of a and b is 1, like we do in the standard proof. Now, if you've not seen the standard proof, why are we allowed to kind of assume this? Why can we, without loss of generality, assume a and b have greatest common uh, divisor 1? Well, the idea here is if they didn't, so let's say root 2 um, was, let's say, 16 over 6. So if this was our a and this was our b, well, what we could first do is actually just simplify this fraction. So turn it into 8 over 3, and then we would just call this our a and this our b. So broadly speaking, if root 2 is rational, we may assume that we've written it in its lowest terms, a and b. And in fact, the fact that it's in lowest terms will become important later. OK, well, if I just square this equation and rearrange it, I get that a squared is b squared plus b squared. And this looks a lot like Pythagoras' theorem. And we're going to use that and now use our triangle. So by Pythagoras' theorem, there is an isosceles triangle with side lengths b, b, and a, like so. And I'm going to call the vertices, let me call that b, this one here a, and this one here c, like so. And what we're going to do is essentially construct um, root 2. It's currently is a over b. But we're going to show that it equals another ratio of two numbers, where those two numbers are smaller than a and b. OK, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to start with b, and we're going to think of b as the center of a circle with radius lowercase b. So that red line there would be one radius. And if I think about this circle kind of coming out like so, it, well, this is not a great, great sketch, but it would kind of come around all the way like this off the screen and like so. But the point I'm actually interested in is that point there, which I'm going to call capital D. So this length. So that length there would just be lowercase b, like so. OK, cool. So I'd create this point d. And notice that the length d to c that would just be a minus b, like so. OK, OK, cool. And what am I going to do now? Well, I want to construct another isosceles right angle triangle. And the way I'm going to do that is take d, and that's going to be kind of where my right angle is. So I'll draw that length there, and I'll call that length, or that point there, E. So now I've got DEC, and I've chosen this line here to be such that it makes a right angle with the line BC. OK, great. Now, this is a certainly a right angle triangle. We can see it's got right angle in it. But furthermore, it's an isosceles right angle triangle. How do I know that? Well, this angle is 45 degrees, because triangle ABC, the big one, is isosceles and right angle. So that's 45. And so therefore, that's also 45, since angles in a triangle must add to 180. OK, cool. So that's DC. And now what we're going to do is work out this length EC. And it's going to turn out this is going to be kind of our contradiction here. Uh, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to do this by noticing that triangle ABC and EDC are now similar. They're both isosceles right angle triangles. They all have the same angles. OK, so now we can look at the ratio of its side length. So E to C um, to one of the shorter side lengths. So I'll go A minus B. That must be equal to the hypotenuse of the big triangle, which has length A. So B to C has length A. And then divided by one of the shorter lengths, which is B, like so. And so if I just kind of uh, cross multiply here, or in fact, I don't even need to cross multiply, I can just keep EC by itself. So I get A squared minus AB all over B, like so. But now the idea is, remember, A squared is just 2B squared. So this is going to be 2B squared minus AB all divided by B. And then simplifying this guy, that's just 2b minus a, like so. So this length from e to c is just 2b minus a. And this is our contradiction. Remember earlier we said root 2 was a over b, and a and b had greatest common divisor 1, which essentially just means that a and b are as small as possible. Because if, they, uh, if this couldn't be simplified further, well, there's no other smaller numbers that would be equivalent. Uh, and if it could be simplified further, well, then they wouldn't have greatest common divisor 1. Um, so the idea here is, well, now we've got a over b also as this ratio. So a over b was the, the ratio of the hypotenuse to one of the side lengths. And we've just worked out that that's ec divided by a minus b. So 2b minus a over 
a minus b. But both of these numbers here, so this number in particular is smaller than a. How do I know it's smaller than a? Well, we can visually see it. So um, 2b minus a here is the hypotenuse of this triangle, and it's clearly shorter than ac, and ac is clearly shorter than bc. So, I mean, that's one way to see it. And maybe it's easy to see that a minus b is smaller than b, because a minus b is, well, a segment. Um, well, actually, maybe that's not as clear to see that a minus b is um, less than b. Um, Actually, yeah, a minus b here is the hypotenuse of, uh, sorry, is the short length dc of this right angle triangle. And so therefore it's shorter than that length, ec, but ec is shorter than a to c, which has side length b. Anyway, um, that's essentially how you can show this. So you can, if you wanted to proceed this with infinite descent, but we've essentially just done this by contradiction. So yeah, not a standard proof to root two being irrational, but this one does date back, I think, to Euclid's time, so over 2000 years. Um, but yeah, I haven't really done many geometrical proofs on the channel, uh, or certainly not recently. So do get in touch. Uh, let me know if that's what you want to see some more of those sorts of things. Uh, but thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.